Hello, my name is Gay Bradshaw. I'm the director of the Carrillo Center for Nonviolence. I wanted to tell you about a wonderful opportunity that I had to participate in a day-long conference, an elephant in Daba in South Africa today. And Daba is the Sulu or Goza word for a great conference. And it was really amazing. There were tremendous people you've probably heard of, Joyce Poole, David Bilchas, Marion Garay, Jim Karani, uh, wonderful people who have been working for and with elephants for years and years and years, and in, in other areas as well for wildlife. The purpose of this uh, workshop or conference that was sponsored by the EMS Foundation in South Africa was to bring to bear all of the scientific and legal policy educators together to bear on uh, trying to stop uh, the practice of captivity, shipping uh, elephants into different countries, to, to zoos, elsewhere. Uh, but the topic was much broader and it really reflected a profound shift in how people are understanding nature and elephants. Uh, the entire conference was uh, recorded and will stream and we'll be able to post that. Uh, right now, I'm just after I finish talking, you'll hear my short presentation. There was a lot of fantastic discussion and question and answers that went on. And I really urge you when that link comes out to listen to it in full. Thank you very much. When confronted with inescapable and overwhelming violence, the mind implodes. Psychologists call it post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Its symptoms include depression, uncontrollable fear, panic, flashbacks, nightmares, aggression, violence against others, infanticide, and self-mutilation. Trauma profoundly undermines the immune system and physiological functions as well as the mind. Fifteen years ago, elephants in South Africa were diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Since then, elephant PTSD has reached epidemic proportions. Elephants in captivity exhibit similar pernicious symptoms of psychological trauma. The condition is common to Africa and Asia. These observations are consistent with science. The entirety of biomedical research is based on a species common model. Neuroscience states that animals share with humans the same brain, mind, consciousness, and vulnerability to psychological assault. When subjected to genocide, imprisonment, cultural destruction, enslavement, loss of homeland, torture, and war, or, in the language of elephant managers and conservationists, culls, translocation, captivity, training, human-elephant conflict, crop protection. Both humans and elephants experience psychological and social breakdown. Impacts of trauma are not limited to survivors. Trauma transmits socially, epigenetically, and neurobiologically. Trauma etches the mind and the body. It spreads over time and space from parent to child, child to child, neighbor to neighbor, and on and on. Unless the cycle of violence is stopped, trauma becomes a way of life. Trauma becomes culture. To end the perpetuation of trauma and begin to heal, elephant ways of life before colonial occupation must be reinstated. Killing in captivity must end. Ancestral habitat must be restored. This not only holds for elephants, but for wildlife everywhere and on every continent and in every ocean. Dame Daphne and Angela Sheldrick provide human exemplars for how elephant trauma survivors can heal and regain self-determination. This can be accomplished writ large by replacing human cultures of violence with an ethic of care. Elephants are near extinction. Their numbers are few. Even if they can be saved from physical extinction, elephants are at risk from psychological extinction. On the outside, they may look like elephants, but inside, 
they are no longer bearers of their once great civilization. Practices of captivity and management guarantee psychological extinction. And when this happens, we will weep, lost without our animal kin and helpless to stop our own destruction. Thank you.